Good evening. Welcome to our Holden Evening uh, Prayer Lenten Services. Uh, this is March 10th. Um, yeah, just a, a, a reminder, stay tuned. Uh, uh, our goal and our hope is to, is to have in-person services on Palm Sunday and uh, Easter Sunday and, and Holy Week leading up to Easter Sunday. So just, again, um, we'll be communicating that to you soon, so just keep your eye on um, emails and communications. But um, yeah, so let's begin our worship. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own. of our pathways and you are 
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. The scripture reading this evening comes from Jonah, chapter 3, 10 through chapter 4. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah. He became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. When dawn came up, the next day God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals? You know, Jonah is always one of those stories that we love, especially growing up as a kid. It's one of those Old Testament stories that appears in almost all the Bible lessons. And it seems like the lesson or the kind of the purpose of those stories is that, uh, that, that you can't run from God. Or, or if God wants you to do something, you can't run away. Because obviously in the beginning, Jonah is given this mission, this assignment from God to go preach to Nineveh, and then he runs away, and then finds a boat, there's a storm, they throw him in the ocean, he gets swallowed by a large fish, gets vomited out on the beach, and goes and does what he's told to do. I mean, it's a story that we connect with that inspires kind of imagination and wonder at, at you know, at what God is capable of and, and those who are called to, to do something on behalf of God or to speak words of truth or repentance to others. But the story isn't really about 
running away from God and God pursuing Jonah. I mean, that's a big part of it. But the story is about forgiveness. The story is about kind of dealing with prejudice or how we see others. Because obviously here at the end, the passage that we just read, Jonah is not happy that Nineveh repented. I mean, here was the enemy of Israel. They were a people who, who weren't following the ways of God, and yet they repented. They turned around and they kind of followed the ways of God after this. They were changed. They were healed. They were saved if you will, and Jonah's upset. He's mad to the point where he doesn't want to live anymore because there they are, his enemies. He doesn't want them around, and God shows them mercy. Isn't it amazing that a 3,000-year-old story can still resonate with us today with what we see in our world? You know, I remember very vividly when I was in high school, uh, on a, playing on the baseball team. We, our town didn't have a team, so we had to go to a town ten miles away to play. And I remember I was driving with my friend on the way home from practice because there was a guy who was a year younger than me, and for some reason we just butted heads. I don't know why, but I remember driving in the car and saying, "Ah, I just can't stand him." And my friend burst out into laughter and said. <laughs> He said the exact same thing about you. <laughs> so it's like, I found myself just all of a sudden being like, why do I feel that way? I'm like, right, that is stupid. And so after that, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to be friendly, treat this guy like a friend, and eh, actually, it worked out. Sometimes how you treat people changes <laughs> how they act towards you. When we talk about abiding in God's love, when we talk about following God's command, kind of the call to live our life, we're called to speak words of grace, of mercy, of love to those even we see as our enemies. And that can have such a profound impact if we love those who maybe we see as different or maybe we've had conflict with in the past or, or, or for whatever reason. And we reach out in love and in service and focus on what include, what, what kind of unites us, what do we have in common, what, how can we include others rather than focus on what separates, divides, and is different. From each other. Because, you know, I'd like to think when we really get down to the basics of things, all of us have certain similarities. We all want to have meaningful work. We all want to be able to love our family without fear. We all want to be able to worship the way we desire without fear or prejudice or, or conflict. Simply, we all want to love and be loved. And Jonah hated Nineveh. Couldn't stand them. Couldn't stand to see God show mercy to them. And that's the point of this story. The point is to remind us that lives are meaningful. The lives of others are meaningful. And that God cares not just about us, but about the world and everyone. So tonight I'd like to take this moment to have an invitation to abide in God's love and extend that perception 
to everyone else? How would we see the world? How would we see those groups maybe that we disagree with or, or have had strife with as abiding in God's love too? I mean, for me, that's the amazing, wonderful, truly powerful nature of the gospel. God so loved the world. God loves you. God loves me. God loves the world. So let's abide in that love. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness darkness has has not not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth, the woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to so highly favored for God is with you. You shall bear a child and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your soul. For 
peace between nations, for peace between peoples. God of mercy, hold us in thy For all of your servants who live out your gospel, Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be your your name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come, your your will be done done, on on earth as as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God.